Right, so we're looking at the yellow wood and simplifying it into pencil. And you can see I've got a basic outline of it there. It's more of a skeleton, but that's essentially where you want to start is you are looking up at a different perspective. We've been looking at the other stuff from the side. Now the concept of this yellow wood is that we want to get a real sense of perspective because it's it's an ancient tree, well, ancient family, and the idea is that we want to get this real sense of depth going from the base of the tree up to the top. And so in pencil, you don't have the color to work with to give you that wow factor. You have to actually use the contrast of the pencil. And the trick to doing that essentially is to try and get your mark making to go in the direction that the object is growing. So just starting out, we wanting to look for some of the main areas of darkness that will be able to identify to a certain degree the outside areas of the tree or the outside areas of the main parts that can give us quick recognition that this is an important element of the tree. Now using your pencil we've got a, a 4B pencil here and it's nice and sharp so I'm looking to find information that by putting pencil in I'm leaving out the white of the page as well. Now where I'm not putting pencil it tends to leave the small little gaps all right and the little gaps I'm constantly looking for to see I can either because it's going to stand out same time I'm looking to find where these little branches might go out the whole time thinking I need to flick out these little pieces flick out these little branches uh, building up on the detail that is going to finish things off the leaves and whatnot we can look at a little little while but we want to make sure that we don't just obliterate the drawing with quick sketching this early stage is important to identify where the detail is by just gently going over it we're not in a rush and you're wanting to look going from a strong base my lines are getting lighter and thinner as they go out towards the outside as I said, constantly looking to see where this is going to end up. The whole drawing, the whole time, I'm looking for a completion. That's the trick to composition, is you're analyzing it the entire time, thinking, what is the whole picture? What do I want this to end up looking like? And that's the key to abstraction as well, is abstract is just another word for simplification. And you're looking to break down the picture surface just like uh, Picasso did or George Brock they're looking initially in the early cubism the Cezanne phase of his cubism where they're still using nominal objects identifiable things that they are simplifying it's only once they get into the analytical cubism that they think how can we actually break away from real form to just looking for the most important parts and it becomes flat areas of shape and flat areas of light and dark to create something and essentially that's also what we're doing here is we are looking in pencil drawing to find the most important parts we are simplifying it to the most abstract and you're using your pencil slowly pushing along pressing lightly to start with get your confidence keep looking at your reference keep looking at the reference to make sure that you um, are following where it is dark where it is light and by doing that you can easily generate a latticing of tonal variation and that's actually the fun part of it is building these little blocks of where 
you can imagine things in the background and then you can pull the things forward in the foreground and it becomes a sort of Lord of the Rings journey or a, the Elvish Woods or um, right back to Tolkien's journey through Hogsback where and this is where this particular image of the yellow wood is is the garden route and it's just moss everywhere and we're looking to try and create that sense of grandeur we're looking up at at this particular tree uh, one of the the symbols of of south africa in that it's the national tree we're thinking how can i get that sense of depth or, or how do i get to to give it the idea that we are looking up to it it is standing out and we get our lines to converge from a broad base up to a thin top. So almost going from uh, bigger mark making, longer mark making in the foreground at the bottom of the page. And then as we go up, we're going to be thinner. Now these little marks that I'm making, I'm trying to get the marks going in the direction that the bark is peeling outwards. So you get these very deep grooves that run into the center of this tree um, like buttress roots that have grown up and gnarled around and we are looking to exaggerate that because it is a specific element of this tree we're getting it to move our pencil marks almost in the direction that the object is growing i know the, the tree is growing upwards but it also these are in the direction that the the if you were to cut the tree with a chainsaw straight through the middle of it you would get those rings and the these are following those marks are following the marks that the rings would would make and so you are not only getting these vertical marks to show the direction that the tree is growing in but also you are getting the horizontal marks to show the broad form of it and that's the trick with pencil you do kind of get away with the ability to show form using lines and the closer your lines are it's obviously just going to become a solid area and then where your lines are further apart the human brain has the ability to then see that little gap the light versus the dark edge has um, an ability to we see that as a shape. It might be a long shape, it might be a short shape, it might be a, a thin shape, it might be a curved shape, and the eye follows that. So we're just going to try and create now this long triangle that starts at broad base at the bottom and it sneaks up to the top. And that sort of arrow is giving us the first indication. This is like a highway going from dark at the base right up to the top of the tree. We're getting this line, this travel. And that's where the the magic starts to begin because you get taken on this directive journey of i'm gonna go I'm, I'm traveling here where does my immediately go and we want to make sure that the vanishing point up the top of this tree here is where the eye ultimately ends up because we're going in this convergence um and you get that lovely sense of depth remember we want to shade a little bit lighter here up the top and uh, we're getting not only direction from the lines we're making but having our lines close together we get a little bit of shading and we get that form also putting in the little bits of detail where this particular bark is almost like paper in, in ways that it sometimes peels off uh, with age and you're getting little cuts and the little grooves so you're constantly looking for variety it is variety and the act of random mark making that is really what essentially gets something to stand out. Little puck marks and verticals, horizontals. So you, you're feeding this page with more and more information. Uh, as I said, keep looking at your reference to find where the darkest areas are, where the lightest areas are. And if you look back at the reference, there's this whole area is quite dark, but we're wanting to exaggerate it. We want to pull more light out where there's more light and shade in uh, to create the dark areas. But 
a pencil drawing that is going to be successful is going to create more contrast. You're going to have pulled out a lot more of the light to get that to jump out and contrast. So if you think about it, this is just one solid beam that's going up, starting with this broad base. And we're just scribbling along here to constantly get a sense of this direction. Now you notice I haven't sharpened my pencil again. I'm using my pencil on its side. So as it moves, I might occasionally keep moving it within my fingers so that I can turn it. You see, and then we get back to a sharp edge. So we're looking again now onto an outside branch that would be coming out. Now this tree, you think, don't trees normally grow up from the bottom upwards? This tree is coming in from the side. Well, it's based on the perspective that we're looking from. This is like a worm view, you know, bird's eye view. This is a worm view. You get from the bottom rather than the top. You get this fisheye effect. It's a very wide open and things sort of come from the side. You've got your head right against the trunk of the tree looking upwards and you get that aspect then that the vanishing point will be up the to top two thirds and we get these little trees to come in then from the side. And what that does also is it gives perspective to the object that you're drawing. So you've got something to relate it to. You're wanting to look for that constant variety. I can have this particular tree working against the sky background, for example. So the tree is going to be dark. How do I get that maximum contrast? I put it against a white background so then I can actually see what I'm looking for. The trick with this to make sure that we can actually get a sense of depth here up the top A, I can do a little bit lighter, but then I risk losing the detail. I want to make sure that you can see these little reverse D marks. They're sort of showing the form of the branch. Uh, they may not technically be in the reference, but what it does is it helps to show the tubular form uh, D back to front, the letter D back to front is going to help show the tubular form of those branches and also almost give it like there's these branches that are creating shadows on top of it and the shadow would form the line around the outside of that and so we're just going to sort of tickle our way through these fine details at the top here and I suppose you could almost pretend that you are up at the top of the tree looking down now and I'm busy drawing the roots as they buttress out at the base. It's exactly the same concept. You've got your eye right against the trunk and it sneaks around there. So let's get these fine fan, small little mark making. We get that to just continue to sneak around there it goes and goes and goes and that's essentially what we're going to be doing we're going to push this forward now it's just a repetition so I've worked from the base of the trunk up the detail following the form of it and now I'm going to complete that or repeat it with all of the edges
Now going up closer, we're going to look at trying to identify these little leaves that exist in the foreground because they're going to offer some good contrast to what is going around in the rest of the tree. You get the little outlines to start with and it's very basically little leaves that are irregular shapes from a stem. They're going to have sharp little edges to them. Um, they sometimes start in the center, like butterfly shapes. They have little butterfly wings continuing. And again, it's random. You put them in some places and not in others. You're constantly trying to think, I know that these things are going to go in areas where they are going to be contrasted against a dark background or a light background. Um, so your, your mark making is important in that it identifies different shapes of where things go there. Alright, so now in order to be able to fill that in, we're going to identify now, to get these to stand out, we have to shade behind them. Uh, it should continue with the top of the tree because I have to have quite a sharp pencil here to get in around the shapes that you've just drawn. By putting dark in the background, those are going to then stand out. And you can come back in at a later stage and really make this quite a bit darker. And you want to try and avoid having these little outlines stand out. So all you end up with then is shapes. Just the little shapes bouncing out at you, the light standing out against the dark. Now on this background there where there's the, the light shape, you might have to just shade those in. But we're going to try and repeat that whole process of just shading in around. And you notice the mark making I'm using is not really specifically in the direction that the object is growing, like we were doing earlier. Vertical for the tree going straight up or horizontally where the line would show the rings of the tree. Uh, here we're just looking to create that contrast between the light and dark. You could, if you had the time, go horizontally and follow the root of the tree or you can come back if you want to with an eraser and you take out these little bits of light but I feel that kind of defeats the, the object of thinking constructively and thinking ahead and learning a new language by making sure you're leaving light out or identifying a new space so here we're going to just give this a little bit of a gentle Identification on the outside here, so we get that to just give us some form. And so we get these little leaves to be of this bush that's around the base um, that is going to give us a change in texture. It's at the base of the artwork so that it, we might have sitting in the undergrowth, we've got these little bushes that are around us, you know, I think. It's a very strange place to have, have leaves, but actually it's... Uh, the uh, small branches that might be in amongst the undergrowth and you get these the strong dark shadow of the light leaves against a dark background you get a different type of texture and you continue to get that variety standing out and by having these dark shapes a shadow in the background you get these little leaves to then jump out around that and you can just trace your way around these little objects keeping some dark lines going and as long as you don't have anything that's going to just be in one area you'll find that that it will it will all sort of blend in you want to avoid suddenly having a very dark area in one particular space because that will just jump out at you and it will spoil the composition, it will end up being a focus. Now you can come back and you can complete that. We're going to move to the same concept that there might be these little leaves on a branch that's quite a bit further away from us. So we could now just flick out miniature versions of those little outlines and at the same time they're little random marks where we've got a couple of leaves that are together in the previous exercise we were looking at the marula tree I specifically focused on 
the way you can use a little scribbling technique to get away with creating little leaves. Now, the trick to these little leaves, as I said previously, is the random way in which you can shade in a small area, likely, and then leave space and then put little dots in. So you've got form that's being developed the entire time. Uh, you're not just putting a pattern in. It has to be random in that you've got your dark here, making sure that you're creating your light. And it's a little bit of a softer edge, so you can see it uh, a little bit further away there. Okay, then we're just going to finish off now this whole concept where we can give it a little bit more detail. That's with a, a lot of um, super juice. And there we go. We get to the, the end. So, hope you enjoyed that.